All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Versatility Podcast. I'm your host, Jewels. I messed up a little bit. I'm not going to lie. not going to lie. <laughs> but um, I saw you got a little scared from my clap. Uh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> you told me about it before I, you started. So I did, fine. but I felt like you still did not expect Said, it. No, you don't have to. <laughs> to be what it was. So, my bad. <laughs> but um, as you see, I have a new guest today. Another woman on the podcast. Sorry, third woman on the podcast. Woo! Woohoo. Uh, after my friend told me that I was being whatever because I never had any woman on, I'm like, it just didn't happen. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying to be better. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm getting different people on and stuff. I'm not afraid of them or anything. I just just didn't happen, okay? <laughs> it's happening though, all right? Thank you. Jeez. Um, but um yeah, so uh, would you like to introduce yourself and everything? Yes. Hi everybody, my name is Kasha Katora Hancock. I am a senior multimedia journalism major. I go to Morgan State University. Woo-hoo. This is where I met Julian. I'm also currently serving as Miss Morgan State University and I'm mm-hmm. so happy to be on the podcast today. Thank you for having me, Julian. No problem. <laughs> um but yeah, I want to have Kasha on the podcast to just talk about a whole bunch of different things. We talked a few times and uh she also interns at WEAA, which is where I used to technically intern. Well, technically I'm still there as well. I, it's a whole other thing, whatever, whatever. We're not going to get into <laughs> it. I still work with them and for them yada yada yada. Okay, whatever. But, um, you know, we just talked a few different times. And I was like, you know what? Why don't I bring her on the podcast? And here I am. And no, right? And here she is looking great. (laughs) Thank you. She's doing great. (laughs) But um, so we're going to get started. Of course, y'all know, I think I told you as well, well, we all start off with top news. I only have one today because I wanted to get into the thick of uh, the conversation I heard being Miss Morgan State University, the 78th. Yes, the Ms. 78th. Yes, it was, it was a little off The 78th. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so we're going to get started with something that kind of everybody has talked about uh, recently. Um, Serena Williams, uh, who says she is gradually, basically, quote unquote, evolving away from the game. She doesn't like the word uh, retirement because. It's kind of like, you see, remember how, like, when Kobe retired? Mm-hmm. Granted, his body can't keep up with that part, but mm-hmm. his mind is still evolving. Mm-hmm. And he made that film, uh, the, what's it, I think it was, like, his le- letter to basketball. Okay. And he won a, what thing was it? Was it Emmy? Emmy? I think it was an Emmy. It was mm-hmm. an Emmy for it. Um, and, you know, just all these different things you can do post, uh, post your career. I mean, yeah. look at Michael Jordan. He's the owner of a team and things of that nature. Like, it's, you know... It's bigger than just the game, yeah. whereas back then, like, a lot of people, when they retired from a sport, they was just like... What do I do next? Yeah, what am I doing <laughs> with my life? Even Sha- Shaq actually talked about... Have you ever heard of uh, Shaq Life? No, I've never heard of You never heard of, heard of the show Shaq Life? No, I've never heard of that. So he did it... He started it, like, a little before the pandemic, uh-huh. and he was recording just all the different things he does in his life. Because uh-huh. if you didn't know, Shaq is an EDM DJ. You know what EDM is? No. It's that? like electronic dance and music. Wow. That's I know, really right? Interesting. You wouldn't think it. No, be him. but see, what's crazy is like I know that Shaq has been doing his thing like after his career because you realize he's on so many commercials. He's on every. I feel commercial. like every time I turn on the TV, it's like it's always a Pizza Hut. He was on like the General uh, Papa John's. Yeah, he is I'm actually sorry. a manager, an executive yeah. for Papa John's. Okay, yeah, it's like always so many businesses. He's like on TV. I'm like. Wow, you just really can't get away from him. No, like, you cannot get away from him at all. You can't get away from him at all. <laughs> he's 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 a he's a mogul, if anything. Mm-hmm. Like that's literally um that's the, what he the is. Word to he does everything. He also uh just wrestled with AEW at like mm-hmm. yeah, for no reason. And he actually got very hurt after doing wow. that because he jumped off no, he led somebody uh jump onto him onto a table uh-huh. and the table broke. Oh my god. Because you know it's, it's wrestling. Yeah. But he was stuck there like this for like Oh man. Forever. They had Crazy. to get a stretcher and everything. <laughs> it was like and I remember on the show they was like it's like yo old ass like uh-huh. what are you doing? Like you know you're not supposed to be doing this, bro. Like you are not young anymore. Uh-huh. And that's that's not the hair there. But you know, just like uh Shaq and Kobe, God rest his soul, mm-hmm. um, and so many other basketball players nowadays. I mean, look at LeBron. He's a billionaire yeah. already. Mm-hmm. And he's he's still playing. Yeah. And he said he still, he he actually said he wants to play with his both his sons. Wow, really? Yes, in the <laughs> NBA. Oh, he's, wow. He's going to be 41, I think, mm-hmm. by the time that they're both what in the What age do most people retire, though, in sports, you feel like? Well, it depends. Because, okay. like, it, for 
for football, it depends on position. Like, actually, it depends overall because they. Mm-hmm. I think they said the average um, football career is like two years. Okay. Two, two years. Two years. But you got to think of the wear and yeah. tear in football. Most people can't keep up. Yeah. Whereas in basketball, it can differ. But I would okay. say like your average all star type player, maybe around mm-hmm. ten years. Um, I could fact check that. Okay. Um, but it it's not that long. And then if you're a role player, it depends on how impactful you are as a role player. <laughs> um, because playing 20 years is not normal. Yeah. At all. That's not normal. It, I don't even no, know if I would not. even want to play this sport for 20 years. Yeah. I mean, maybe if I love it. Sorry. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Maybe, maybe if I love it a lot, but playing it for 20 years, I don't know. Yeah. I 20 mean, years. You got to think about that. 20 years. You have to think about it like this, too. Like Back to the original topic at hand, uh, Serena Williams is 41 years old. She's been playing for a very long mm-hmm. time. And, you know, it, it's Since just They it's were crazy. like how old? Like 11? They were young. <sighs> did you see the movie? Yeah, I did. That they were really young. Phenomenal. They were Shout really out Will young. Smith. I know, he right? He performed his <laughs> butt off in yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but they, they were really, really young. And it's crazy how Venus was actually better than Serena at mm-hmm. first. And then Serena just ended up becoming the greatest yeah. and i love how they segue that at the end mm-hmm. of the movie they was like <laughs> she's like she's the person now but you're gonna be the greatest, the greatest. that ever lived and the she was great i got chilled i'm getting chills right was. now she <laughs> was she is serena williams like you don't need to say like if you just say serena first person People you're gonna think about she is, is yeah. gonna be serena mm-hmm. if you say you know i mean yeah you say serena like nine out of ten i'm gonna be like serena williams yeah you know like that type of thing because she is She's her. She's bad. She's, uh, right. I, I say, her Heratha. 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 But unfortunately, she did lose in the third round in the U.S. Open. Mm. She, she she still made yeah. it to the second round. She made it after the second round. She actually, this is a very interesting thing that I saw. She is 42 and 0 combined record. She has a 42 and 0 combined record in the first and second round of the yeah. U.S. Open. Forty-two and zero. Exactly. Forty-two and zero. Whoa! Wait a Never minute. has lost in the first and second <laughs> exactly. round of the U.S. Open. That. That's amazing. That's like crazy. She, Hurthy, that look. That's what we gotta say, right? Hurthy. 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 Okay. Hurthy. Like Agatha. Yeah. Hurthy. Hurthy. Yeah. Like okay. That. <laughs> like that. So it, but it was insane. But also, uh, Venus and Serena actually played in potentially their finals, uh, their final last doubles match as well mm-hmm. in the U.S. Open because, you know, they do the doubles yeah. during. I mean, because you have energy enough to do both, for mm-hmm. real. Um, at least from what I say. But here's some of the interesting things that also um, I saw uh, that she said about her um, evolve, evolving away, about mm-hmm. her evolving away from the game. Mm-hmm. She said, if she were a man, then it'd be different. But she wants to start a family and basically give her daughter a younger sister because the, the kid wants what's a sister. Like literally, <laughs> yeah. I read the article yesterday okay. and she was like, "Yeah, she does not want a brother <laughs> at wow, all." Wow. <laughs> but um, but yeah, like she wants to start a family yeah. and you know, like with Kobe, uh, per se, um, he can procreate and things of that nature while still playing because he doesn't have to labor. Yeah. But Serena does, yeah. and she said she was like six months pregnant when she won one of the titles wow. she had i kid you I, not yeah no i'm sorry if that was me uh i would not be playing at all <laughs> <laughs> i just would not be playing it would just be as simple as that like i'm pregnant six months pregnant it was it was four or Man. six months but either way she was she was in there yeah right. exactly <laughs> wow hats off to her because uh that's insane can't say that i would do the same uh, yeah that's <laughs> definitely insane but actually, here's another thing that um, mm-hmm. I saw about her as well. Um, oop, wrong link. Um, <laughs> the last time, no, what was it? She said when Serena Williams won her first U.S. Open match. Here's some of the things that were going on uh, around the world. Mm-hmm. Greg Popovich, who you know uh, from being like one of mm-hmm. the, actually the greatest coach of all time besides him and Phil Jackson, uh, was 106 all, on the all-time wins list. In his career, meaning mm-hmm. he's just basically getting started. Now he's like number, he's top five. Wow, top that's three a big now. jump, one hundred and six to but top five. That's twenty years. Yeah, though. Serena's been in 
Okay. She's 42 and old for yeah. a reason. You know, she's been there for like 20 years. Tom Brady had not even thrown his first Michigan touchdown pass yet. And we know how long Tom Brady's career yeah. is. He's yeah. been in the league for that 20 man. years. <laughs> yeah, that, I can't stand that, that man. <laughs> um, but uh, LeBron James had not even made his high school debut yet. Wow. That means she was, she's exactly. been doing this for a long time. For and, years. And then also uh, Tim Duncan, who is a retired mm-hmm. NBA player now, he was the reigning NBA Rookie of the Year. He was in the first year of his career, going into his second year of career. Mm-hmm. And she just won her first U.S. Open match. Mm-hmm. That so much has changed yeah. since then. And then on top of that, she's still 42 and 0. 42 and 0 in, in the first and second round matches. Capital H, capital E. Finish the last one. <laughs> capital R. Yeah. <laughs> she That's is what we got her. to say. <laughs> she really is her. And also, Tiger Woods was there at the mm-hmm. matches. Uh, Saquon Barkley, he's a uh, New York Giant running back. Mm-hmm. Um, like, a lot of big figures were there. And I, I saw another thing about, like, how her, um, um, Serena Williams and Tiger Woods, they, they were the trailblazers for, like, the people outside of the normal, like, mm-hmm. you know, main four sports, uh, basketball and football specifically. Yeah. And, um, like, I don't know, soccer or baseball or hockey and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, where, like, black people are like, oh, I can, like, do these sports yeah, and, these and be the best and at be them. The best. And be the best the at best? them. Yeah. It's, it, it's really phenomenal what she does. Um, and going back to kind of what she said about having to evolve away from the game, mm-hmm. I'm starting to think about some of the differences between men and women when they're leaving their sports and stuff. Mm-hmm. Men usually leave when... Their bodies break down on top of saying, okay, wife wants me to finally come home. Whereas with the woman, it's not the same. Yeah. Uh, they have to, you know, again, you have pregnancy. Uh, there's attachment to the kids more because it's a biological thing. Postpartum mm-hmm. depression and things of that nature is a real thing. Uh, misogyny in general. And um, that kind of brought me to a story I heard about in the Olympics, how some of the, the women have babies and stuff, whether they have a man or not. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I don't you know I don't it yeah. that's case by case basis whereas again women have more of a they feel like they have more of an obligation to stay with their kid compared to a man who does not have to carry the yeah. child for 9 months. Mm-hmm. So, well, give or take 9 months. Uh and basically like I remember one of the Olympic ladies, she was running track. Um and she was running her event and they had the kid like the other athletes were watching the kid and she could hear her crying as she was running the race. Mm. So I, I don't remember specific specific. I talked about it in another podcast. I think I think I actually talked about it with my friend Diamond when she was on the podcast. Um, and she actually ended up like making like a daycare type thing for, for athletes to put their kids oh, somewhere safe nice. while they race yeah. and things of that nature. Because again, you, you don't know where the, yeah. where the man is all the time. Or maybe you wanted to, to keep the kid with you and things of that nature. And it's just like those type of things. Mm-hmm. It's like I understand why Serena has to step away. And we wish we could see her even more because yeah. even though we could tell she's not as great as she used to be, she's still great. Yeah. And we want to see greatness as long as possible. Yeah, we do. So, I mean, what, what are some of your thoughts uh, surrounding that, mm-hmm. especially being a woman yourself and yeah. just like how you feel about it? Well, that. the first thing that I was thinking in my head if I hear my kid crying while I'm playing a game, I don't know, Julian. I'm just the type of person. I got to stop this game. Why is my child crying, you know? Yeah. That's the type of thing. But I think, like like you said before, she's a mogul, and that's what I really respect about her. You know, she doesn't want to retire, but instead she's evolving. And even as for, well, for women all over the world, I think that's important to see. But specifically for black women, you know, like you've accomplished so many things, but you don't have to stop here. It doesn't just stop here. You can keep going. Mm -hmm. And me personally, that's something that I really take after because even, you know, becoming Miss Morgan, doing all of these things, it's like I don't have to stop here. I want to keep evolving. You feel me? All the time. Yeah, all the time. time. You know, start as a caterpillar. Then go into a butterfly, well, flying cocoon all first, around. Yeah, then cocoon the first. That's, that's what I'm missing. <laughs> a cocoon first, then a caterpillar, then yeah. a butterfly, flying all around. Feel me? Yeah. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, like, even with me, some people say, like, after, like, you know, being smooth president mm-hmm. and things of that nature, which, of course, doesn't mean as much to everyone else mm-hmm. in general, but 
leading one of the best organizations on yeah. campus. I would say the best organization, <laughs> yeah. on, male organization on campus. I'm not going to get into the women ones and stuff. We're not going to get into that. But um, especially that's not even a fraternity. Mm -hmm. Like being one of the only legit male orgs on campus is not a fraternity and be able to keep up with that. And being able to keep that running after we had five members, basically, mm -hmm. going into last school year and finishing that off. Like, I'm not the president of that org anymore. I mean, I'm like an advisor now. Mm -hmm. But there's more things that I can do. Yeah. And that's why I'm doing my podcast more. I'm talking to people like you yeah. more. I'm working at WA. I'm working on trying to be a better journalist, a better yeah. a better person, a, closer to growing, growing closer to God, mm -hmm. evolving my mental. I go to therapy as well now. Like, I, there's just so many different things yeah. that I want to continuously evolve in all the time like you, and it's the same for everybody you know what i was thinking about now that you say like doing so many things so actually last week i wanted to i was thinking about getting involved in acting right and i'm oh, sitting really? here thinking i'm like i really wish when i was younger my parents would have had me like be a child actor because i'm like <laughs> i could have been set by now i want to like, think, I yeah, think sometimes. i really could have been set by now but i really want to get into it that's great. Yeah. I actually want to do acting as really? well. That's actually something that, um, before I got into, I talked about it on the podcast, I think, mm -hmm. but before I like was, um, got to college and everything, I was known on campus, well, on campus, <laughs> I was known mm -hmm. in high school. Yeah. Actually, we did have a pretty big campus overall, but, uh, I was known for doing theater. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm really good at it. Lovely. And I can say I can that, see that confidently. I can really see that. Oh, thank you. I <laughs> appreciate welcome. it. But like, and that's why like when people ask me like who I am and they be like, oh, you want to be entertained? Like you want to be a podcaster? You want to do radio? You want to do singing? I'm mm -hmm. like, well. I want to do it all. I want to be an entertainer <laughs> as a whole. But like, yeah. I know people at the most, because ever since freshman year, everybody knows I sing. I sing. Yeah. Everybody knows, knows that. <laughs> everybody knows that. But I am... I classify myself as a singer slash entertainer. Mm -hmm. Singing first, then probably acting second, yeah. and then podcasting, which probably kind of flips between actor now since I haven't acted in so long. But whenever I'm home, I'm usually doing some form of acting or something yeah. like that because I know the people out there. And it is an interest of mine. But when you work in this field, in entertainment and stuff as a whole, the door is open. open. I know. I'm the door say, is you're open, be open to so many opportunities because you meet so many people who have exactly. been places, who know other people. You find people who will really put you on. Something that I also really wanted to get back into was modeling. I modeled in high school and I modeled that, my then. freshman year. But it's just, I don't really know if now I'm going to have the time. You know? That's that's okay. Like, you uh, know? <laughs> that, that's, that's really okay. Uh, uh -huh. It's We don't have. A lot of time to mm -hmm. do everything yeah. but we at the very least we can do the most of what we have and prioritize because what you're 21 as well right? yeah um we're 21 <laughs> mm -hmm. like we're both 21 years old and we're only going to get better and better right? like a mm -hmm. you know a cocoon the butterfly yeah. a caterpillar <laughs> cocoon the butterfly and stuff <laughs> and just keep flying around and keep learning and keep growing along our journey just mm -hmm. like Serena Williams because when we graduate technically that's a form of retirement yeah. in a way. like we're <laughs> we're going to that next stage yeah. and evolution evolution <laughs> yes um oh one word um you know you know access that's right mm -hmm. of course um one of the things he said he was like talking on one of his songs that he was like evolute um I don't know if this is a real word I don't think it is but that word really resonated with me. Like, I want to continue to evolute. Um, I learned a word probably like junior year going into senior year of high, high school. But, like, I was that, that really resonated with me. Like, I want to mm -hmm. continue to evolute and be greater than what I am because every day is an opportunity for yeah. me to be better. Yeah, and I say that all the time, but I think people take that phrase lightly. But no, don't take it lightly <laughs> because it's true. Like, you can really be better than you were yesterday. Like, for example, if yesterday I had a bad attitude, let's, for example, not saying that I did have a bad attitude yesterday, hey, but hey, hey, <laughs> let's, like, it's just so, for example, say yesterday I had a bad attitude. I was getting into it with my family. I was, you know, running all over the place. My goal is to use the next day to not have a bad attitude. I'm going to thank God for waking me up this morning. I'm going to be like, God, please help me work on my attitude today because I want to be better than what I was yesterday, you know? 
Like, I don't want to keep making the same mistakes, basically. Yeah, I I agree wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I always, I'm trying to do. I Even before uh, we recorded this and stuff, I wanted mm-hmm. to, I was praying and uh, uh, relinquishing my, um, my sins to mm-hmm. God and just saying, like, this is what's been on my mind and what's causing me not to be the best person, the happiest person, mm-hmm. the more, the most Julian I can be because yeah. that's who I am. My name is Julian. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, shout out my parents, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I, th- like, that's what I want to, uh, I want to continuously be better. But, um, again, back to a little bit, just to kind of close this out and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think Serena Williams will be remembered by uh, the most? And, about the impact, because impact is a really big thing. I kind of want to focus on mm-hmm. on this podcast uh, for this specific episode. What type of impact do you think she made on not just women, but men as men well? Too. I think, well, the type of impact, number one, that she will make now that she say specifically men, I think that people will begin to respect women a lot more. Not saying that they don't, but just seeing all that she's accomplished and seeing how she's evolving into her next stage of life, you know, people will really take their hats off and honor her and they'll respect women for all the things that they do. It won't just be, oh, women only do this, women only do that. People will know, like everyone around the world will know, wow, women are moving mountains you they feel are. me and looking beautiful <laughs> yeah while doing it. and looking beautiful <laughs> i i agree wholeheartedly mm-hmm. um i just remember uh when i first saw like serena and stuff i think it was my dad was like that's a bad woman <laughs> you know like right there like she just in terms of like bad woman like of course beautiful and stuff but like mm-hmm. she gets stuff done gets the job done gets the job you done. never have to question it because you just know she's gonna get it done you know she gonna get the yeah, job done like, like she got them wimbledon's u.s mm-hmm. opens like all these trophies all these accomplishments and still did stuff with her yeah. sister on top of that i know like that's like she always kept her family first I know. that whole her time. time management skills i'm gonna need those <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I need to take notes. <laughs> like, for real, though. But it, that, Serena Williams is, she's the GOAT. She is one of the GOATs of our generation. And she, she just, she's so dope, yeah. man. She's so dope. That's a strong woman, mm-hmm. too. Like, in general. Like, I, I remember when I first saw her, I was like, yo, yo she's strong. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like she's strong. <laughs> but she still does stuff. In her elegant way, still, uh-huh. and like, oh, that was one thing she said. She said, "Woman can be super strong mm-hmm. and get things done, and but still be a woman, mm-hmm. and still be great." You know, not like some people be like, "If you're strong or whatever, you're a lesbian and you're gay or something like that." I'm like, mm-hmm. "That's just that's just not true." Some yeah. people just want to be strong, and there are women. I mean, and there are men who like that still. Like, mm-hmm. um, what, and that's physically and mentally. Like, I feel like a lot of people don't want a stronger woman me personally i would rather have a stronger woman who actually help and build with me mm-hmm. rather than somebody who's just a yes person because yeah. i got enough of those in my life i'd rather have somebody that's gonna yeah. push me um that's how i feel like every relationship should be but i agree yeah any last comments or stuff that we move i agree on? just all the beautiful women in the world out there continue to be her because we're all her <laughs> and i believe in you <laughs> and that's our 78s Morgan State <laughs> University. All right. But um, that's why I only had that one topic for uh, the news part. Because now, um, again, you are 78th yes, Miss Morgan State I am. University. <laughs> and just kind of to, to get it, uh, the conversation started about this, um, what is it like being Miss Morgan? Um, and like for the people who don't know, like what uh-huh. is that anyway? Because yeah. um, it's at HBCUs. That's a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really big thing. <laughs> okay, so first, thank you for that question, Julian. <laughs> no problem. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, like Julian said, at HBCU, it's a really big thing. It's a mister and a miss. Shout out to the mister, Ediyami Koji. Mm-hmm. But we're yeah. basically um, the brand ambassadors for Morgan State University. We're the face of the school. Whenever people think about Morgan State University, They think of us whenever people see anything Morgan State University related. They think of us. We go to speaking engagements with the president, host our own events on campus. Um, We go to the homecoming gala. It's all about just showing up, being able to serve your school in the best way that you know how. 
you know. Mm -hmm. But it's been a great experience so far. I mean, we are only three weeks into the school year, and I feel like it's been about three months. (laughs) 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 Because, you know, the first week of school or the first couple of weeks of school is always the busiest, you know, freshman week. Then you get back, you have welcome week. Then the second week, you still have events every single day that you have to go to. On top of still being a student, going to class, maintaining the social life, maintaining your (laughs) mental health, and all of that. But it's a really great experience. It's a humbling experience. I wouldn't want to, like, give this up for the world. And I'm just so, so grateful that, like, God gave me this opportunity because when I was a freshman, um, I saw Miss Morgan State, and I just really liked her attitude. I liked the way, yes, Erica Knox. She, I really liked her attitude. I liked the way that she carried herself. I respected her. I respected the way that um, she inspired others on campus. And I was just like, you know, I really want to be able to be that person. Oh, so, so that's where the inspiration kind of Yeah, right that's there? where the inspiration okay, came from. Okay. Yeah. It's very interesting. I was, because I was going to ask a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. well, no, That's good, though. That's good. <laughs> it's, it's a, you know, it's a teaser, right? Yes. Um, so what are kind of some of the uh, perks of being Miss Morgan? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So perks of being Miss Morgan, um, I would say a good perk that we have, you would be able to get a lot of good connections, um, especially for someone who has a major like we have journalism. Mm-hmm. You're out there, you're talking, you're taking pictures, you're recording videos. All of that stuff is kind of building me for the type of career that I want because I do want to be a news reporter slash anchor. So it's teaching me how to talk, it's teaching me how to communicate, how to be comfortable in front of the camera. So that's a perk that I would say that I'm getting from it. And of course, there's other perks that come with it too, like, oh, getting into the homecoming concert backstage. and Oh, you get backstage? Yeah. Hey, maybe <laughs> I should have ran. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like getting into the homecoming concert backstage, getting um, other events for free, the wardrobe that comes along with it too. But also, like, I would say the experience is just so rich, you know? Like, I'm just going to be able to look back and say, wow, like, I was really Miss Morgan State University and also just being able to be a part of history. Yeah. You know, because yeah. before we know it, we're going to be on the 100th Miss Morgan State University. And then there are all the misses yeah. going to come back <laughs> and going to be lined up. Exactly. <laughs> uh, that's 20 years from now. So, mm-hmm. shoot, what, 40? Jesus yeah. Christ. Oh, oh man. <laughs> we don't want to get into oh, that too man. much. We um, got to find this video 40 years from now <laughs> so we can watch it when that happens. No, like real talk. But, um... <laughs> So then I should kind of lead you to like, I know you're not exactly like a different person or anything. Mm -hmm. Like as far as I could tell, because I really started talking to you last school year, so Mm -hmm. about a year ago, like you're still the same person overall. I mean, you're continuously evolving, of course, Mm -hmm. and things (laughs) of that nature. But how have things changed a bit since getting the position in terms of, because we talked about a little like more stairs, like you're saying hi to people more. Mm -hmm. Like as Miss Junior, you know, it's a little bit, yeah. Yeah. But now like you are the Miss, like the Miss. So how was, how's that? (laughs) So I would say that was something that I had to get used to. I want to say on the Friday that they announced the winners, that next week, we started school, of course, on Monday. I went in the canteen and all around campus. People are staring at me. Uh, <laughs> I was confused at first. I was just like, wait, why is everyone staring at me? Like, is there something on my face? Am I wearing that. something wrong? <laughs> like, what's everyone staring at me? But then I'm like, wait, I mean, I did just win this Morgan State University. So, yeah. you know, I'm going to get the unexpected stares. And then also, I would say, yeah, like just being saying hi to everyone. I'm not a rude person, you know that, but (laughs) (laughs) what I'm saying is, is that before I had the position, I was saying hi to people, but I don't think like it was so frequent, you know, like Mm -hmm. just like, I see everyone now and I just say like, oh my gosh, like, hi, how are you? You know, like just to make sure everyone is welcomed. And I would say that it really encourages me to have a good attitude, to Mm -hmm. smile more because I should be smiling anyway because I should just be grateful (laughs) that I'm seeing another day. But I would say the good part about having the position is that it really encourages me to just be a graceful person, a good leader. It forces me to, you know, smile a lot more. All that good stuff. 
And nothing wrong with smiling. I it's nothing smiling. wrong with smiling. Smile. <laughs> uh, but uh, you kind of talked about it a little bit. So, like, what made you start wanting to be a miss in the first place? I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. I thought it was, like, something, like, in high school or something of that nature. But as you kind of talked about it, a little yeah. more, I'm like, oh, that, that's very, mm-hmm. very interesting. Cause- yeah. I feel like, well, in high school, I wasn't necessarily, like, shy. But in high school... I still had a lot of growing to do, obviously. We all do. I'm it's only in high school. I'm only in high school. But when I got to Morgan, um, they had an SGA interest meeting, and I was an SGA in high school, so I thought, you know, why not just carry it over into college? So we got there. We looked at all the positions. They talked about, like, campus royalty, so Mr. and Miss. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll run for Miss Freshman. Ran for Miss Freshman. I didn't win. But then... I was um, grateful for the fact that I didn't win because I felt like it was an opportunity for me to really build a foundation on campus and, Mm -hmm. like, get involved in other organizations, meet people so that, you know, just to expand my opportunities and just to really enjoy my experience. So then the next year came, ran for Miss Sophomore. Thank God I won Miss Sophomore. (laughs) But then again, um, the next year I ran for Miss Junior. And just the experiences that I got from being on the real court, from being Miss Sophomore and being Miss Junior, the impact that I had on the community, on Morgan State as a whole, like my class, I really liked that experience. So I just thought, you know, why not just continue and yeah why not just continue you know that's that's so dope so then (laughs) can you talk about a little bit more of how uh erica knox was Mm -hmm. the 75th yeah 75th miss morgan Mm -hmm. state university talk about how she like helped inspire you Mm -hmm. and and just i mean i'm I'm pretty sure you talked to her a few different times i think (laughs) she's really cool people yeah but just talk a little bit about that Yes. Yeah, so when I got to, so I was actually in CASA, which is like that program oh, that you Casa. have to do yeah. to get into Morgan. So of course, because Erica, <laughs> yeah, I am too. Thank you. <laughs> so of course, because at the time, since Erica was Miss Morgan, you know, she was around, she was on campus. So, you know, she was very welcoming, had a great attitude. Um, So that alone just made me look up to her. So I let her know that, you know, I was interested in SGA. She told me about the interest meetings. I told her about the position that I was looking to um, run for. And so she just really inspired me. She was like, yeah, go for it. You know, create a campaign, create a platform that you think your class would like. So she just really inspired me. And then not only in that way, but I think she just kind of took me under her wing as well because it wasn't solely just about, oh, I'm trying to get into the royal court or anything like that. She checked up on me um, even on random days where I wasn't feeling well. She was just always, you know, there making sure that I was okay. And so I saw the way, like I said before, that the campus just really respected her because of the type of person that she was. So just the way that she carried herself, I looked up to that. No, that's, you know? that's that's really dope because a mm-hmm. um, little bit of insider, I guess you want to say, uh, mm-hmm. I actually wanted to run for Mr. Morgan mm-hmm. um, and run for Mr. Sophomore and Mr. Junior and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even I go, if you, if you know me, it actually fits my personality pretty yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I ended up just not. Um, Monley uh, was a big reason why I wanted to. He's uh, Monley Julian. It's crazy. Julian spelled the same way, but it's a last <laughs> name. And it's like, what? Um, mm-hmm. And really cool dude. Uh, he still says what's up whenever he comes to campus and things of that nature. But, like, it, I love the way he carried himself as well. Mm-hmm. I think they were they really matched each other's vibe mm-hmm. a lot well, uh, him and uh, Erica, when they were Mr. and Miss Morgan. Molly's such a cool dude. Yeah. Bro. Like, he's really a so cool, cool dude, bro. <laughs> and I feel like Erica just, in like, in the eyes of Candace, like, she could do no wrong type yeah. stuff. Especially to us freshmen. <laughs> I know. Like, we come to campus and we're like, yo, who are these Mr. and yeah. Mrs.? Like, what is this type of stuff? Mm-hmm. Especially me because I'm coming from all the way in the Midwest. Yeah. And. I'm not used to HBCU culture at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I know a little bit about, like, okay, homecoming is lit yeah. type stuff, and it's a black experience overall. But I, other than that, I didn't know what I was walking into, for real. Ooh, mm-hmm. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just seeing that and seeing how campus was and all that, that really was like, I, I would love to do that. Like, mm-hmm. connect with people, talk with people and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. When it came to run for Mr. Morgan, 
I was just I felt like I wasn't in the right space, mm-hmm. um, which is why I ended up no ended up not doing it. But I did have the uh, idea and things of that nature. I definitely was talking to people, but I decided not to because end of the day, everybody's got a plan. I mean, mm-hmm. like, listen, right now, like, I'm doing my podcast with Miss Morgan State. So, like, I mean, things happen, and mm-hmm. I'm okay with it. Um, because everything happens for a reason, and everybody has a purpose that they have yeah. to do. Um, but you being Miss Morgan is really, it's really dope. Like, Thank it's, you. Honestly, it's a dope <laughs> thing, and I'm glad you continue to work for it. And you talked about, again, you've been Miss Sophomore, and you were Miss Junior as well. You ran for Miss Freshman. So how did those processes from like the campaigning and um, leading up to it and then actually serving it, how did that help you become and like prepare yourself to be the 78th Miss Morgan Mm -hmm. State University? So I think when I was in those positions, because I had the other Miss Morgans to look up to, like Reality and Taylor, I saw what things that they did and I saw what they did really well. So when you're inside and you see basically how the process works and you see like how they're doing things, you know exactly what needs to be done. You know what works. You know what does not work. And I think that the experience of being able to be in those positions are what has been really helping me because I've seen what they've gone through. I've seen all the things that they had to do. So I'm like, okay, if I continue, I know that I'm going to have to do the same thing. I know that I'm going to have to go to this event. Mm -hmm. I know that this is coming (laughs) up soon because I was inside and I saw firsthand Mm -hmm. like what was coming and how things were done. But I also think um, it really, those positions really helps with my connections because I didn't just like come out of anywhere wanting to run from Miss Morgan. So it's like when I was developing a campaign team and what I wanted my platform to be, I know that I had a support system behind me because sitting in those positions before I had a support system. So I knew that by meeting people and by still keeping in touch with the people who were my support system, it just helped me to just, you know, go right into this position and, you know, I'm grateful for the fact that I was being able to experience um, the other Miss Morgans because, like I said before, it's just really helped me. Yeah. No, that's dope. Uh, I was actually asked to be on two campaign teams. Really? <laughs> well, yours and yeah. someone else's. And I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, shit. Uh, some other friends were asked, too. But mm-hmm. I, I declined because I was like, it's too many people. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm a bag out. Plus, again, during that time, I was going through a lot. Mm-hmm. I was like, I got a lot on my plate. I got to finish up with Smooth. I was like, I'm good. I was mm-hmm. like, but I mm-hmm. will, you know, I'll support everybody in general and keep it pushing. So, mm-hmm. um, and I'm glad it turned out the way that it did. And it was a really good race overall with yeah. some drama and things of that nature. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> um, but, it, but um, you're a multimedia journalism major. Yes. Uh, I'll say it again for everybody. Um, how did that help, if at all, in your process to become Miss Mor- Miss Morgan? Because you had the campaigning and you going to mm-hmm. events and just you know that journalism aspect of mm-hmm. you know you got to go out and be in people's faces yeah. in order to get the story or the information that mm-hmm. you want. It most definitely helps, I would say, because as a multimedia journalism major, you know that we have assignments where we have to stand in front of a camera, we have to speak, we have to go out and talk to anyone. So, yeah, like literally anybody, (laughs) like someone walking down the street, hey, can I talk to you real quick? And they can't be in your building. Yeah. You can't talk to people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I feel like that all just, it all just really helps me. Like, it's just crazy how it all just connects, you know? Like, it, 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 Everything just makes sense now. So it's like, I think that it's really helped me because going out and having to talk to people, you know, like when we had our campaign tables, it was really nothing to just approach someone and say, hey, can I tell you about my campaign or can Mm -hmm. I tell you about my platform? Solely because being a multimedia journalism major helped me with that because of the assignments and things that we had to do, the exercises and the activities that we had to do in class. Um, So I would say, like, it most definitely helped. And even having to do the pageant, um, talking in front of people in class, doing those things that make you uncomfortable in class just puts it into practice because it might be uncomfortable to do it in class in front of this small group. But when I got up there and had to speak in front of people at the pageant, it was like nothing only because 
you know, I had yeah. done it before and I was sitting here practicing for it. So I would say like my being a journalism major, it most definitely um, has its perks and it's helping me with this position a lot because of the connections and things like that. Can you actually talk about, uh, cause you mentioned the pageant and mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of people realize like it is like, you know, like with Miss Maryland or Miss mm-hmm. wh- whoever, I don't even, is that Miss Wisconsin? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it is. I, so there's one for each state, <laughs> yeah, right? Uh-huh. I've never seen the races for it <laughs> yeah. at all. Um, shout out to whoever Miss Wisconsin is cause I, I don't know you, but you know, I wish you the best or whatever. But, um, can you talk about like some of the things you have to do during the pageant process? Because I know you guys had to um, uh, the stuff you did beforehand, like going to different events and talking. Mm-hmm. And I remember the the red hot table or whatever, oh, the hot, seat. Uh, hot seat where stuff happened. <laughs> when again, not gonna get into that. Um, yeah, not gonna get into that. But just like some of the things you have to do in the pageant, um, because yeah. it's it's a really dope process and it's yeah. definitely a. Uh, it builds uh, character and things of that nature, but you would know does. more than me, so mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, so we have to do a pageant. So basically what the pageant consists of is the opening dance, which wasn't scored. It's just like a way kind of to introduce the, all of the contestants. And then you have your formal introduction, which is where you put on like your formal wear. That's also not scored, I don't think. But you just go out there and you say your name, where you're from, you know, basic information, your major, your classification, um, explain a little bit about your platform. Then you have a speech. Um, They give you typically like a speech question, then a talent. Then you have your evening walk. So you put on another you know formal attire you do your walk they judge you based on like how Porsche you are and things like that then it's the actual Q&A where you have to answer um a current event question Mm -hmm. and you have to answer a Morgan history question it was looking back it was a really fun experience I honestly the whole campaign season if I could do something again I feel like the pageant is something that I would do again only because I just feel like I had so much fun doing it you know it looked fun Yeah, it was really fun. And it's like, even though the planning and the preparation for it can be kind of stressful, you know, it's all for a good cause, you know? Definitely. (laughs) It's all for a good cause. And, you know, you can't let stuff like that stress you out because it's supposed to be a fun process. Like, yeah, you want the end goal. The end goal is you want to win. But it's like, you have to just enjoy the process. You can't be too focused on, oh, I want to win, I want to win. And then you're not putting the amount of you're not putting your energy into doing what you need to do to mm-hmm. win because all your focus is, oh, I just want to win. I want to win. <laughs> but, like, you know, so it's like you really just have to take your time with it and just have fun because it was very fun. It, yeah, um, <laughs> it, it really seems fun. I would love to do a, a pageant process mm-hmm. one day. Well, technically, I'm going to be the head of one for another thing but that's a mm-hmm. whole nother thing whatever whatever again y'all know i'm mr busy himself <laughs> um so he kind of talked about it a little bit but you know why why become miss morgan mm-hmm. um what does that position mean to you and did you want to be like a voice for the campus or just mm-hmm. like did you just love the idea as a whole you talked about erica and what she mm-hmm. did but like you know what 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 does all that mean to you mm-hmm. especially because you are it now yeah so I would say, like, being Miss Morgan, it's a way to keep adding on to Morgan's legacy. Because, as we all know, the first Miss Morgan was back in 1945, 1946 school I year. I knew it was 76. I had to do the math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's something that started 78 years ago. So to be able to keep adding on to that legacy so that it can keep going, it's really an honor, you know, because like I said before, we're, we're all going down in history, in mm-hmm. HBCU history, in Morgan history. It's really something to be proud of. And then it also, like, being Miss Morgan State, I really did want to be a voice for the campus, but not only the campus, but to be a voice for the community as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like, helping the community at different events, doing things with um, certain schools, elementary, middle school, high school, like you had an just, opening the other day, right? Yeah, yeah. it was actually <laughs> a grand opening of Rossville Elementary School. It that's was, so dope. Yeah, it was really, really, really fun. It was that's like something that was really enjoyable to be at because I don't want to be Miss Morgan State and the community not know who I am. Like, granted, yeah. everyone may not know who I am, but I always want to be able to put myself out there the best way 
I know how. Because when I was Miss Sophomore and when I was Miss Junior, I was focused on helping my class. But I feel like now being Miss Morgan State, yeah, I want to help my whole entire university. I want my university to look good. But I also want to help the Baltimore community because something that my dad always says with um, him being a pastor, he always says like, oh, people in the community should always know who the church is, you know? That's like, true. they should always know because the church should be doing things in the community to make the community better. So I took what he said, and I just basically applied it to being Miss Morgan. Like, the community should know who Miss Morgan State is because she should be out there helping yeah, them, exactly, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's really great, and you sound like a very great person. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's No, that's extremely dope. Um, and then you talked about um, the historical significance a little, which is actually a question I had as well. Mm -hmm. And just speak a little bit about that historical significance. You said 1945, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus, I wasn't even like thought of in any Never. type of way. My <laughs> I don't, grandma my parents, was just born. My parents weren't even thought yeah, of. Yeah, no, my parents were born. My grandmother was born in 1945. Exactly. Yeah. Oh shit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think my uh, probably. I think my granny and grandma are both in their eighties. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. Yeah. What, what's what's today's day? Is the twenty today's, second? Today's the. Well, you said it's today. No, the year. Oh, the year. I'm going to say you said it's today, the 22nd. <laughs> to, um, the year no. is 2022. So oh, if they're in their 80s, yeah, pro around 40. Jesus. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, just <laughs> talk a little bit about that, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the first Miss Morgan State University, her name is Miss Lillian B. Sturgis. She was Miss Morgan State University from 1945 to 1946. I haven't seen a picture of her, though. I really want to see a picture of her. Yeah, that's really dope. Yeah, I really do want to see a picture of her. But like I was saying before, like, just to be able to add on to that legacy, um, something that she started so long ago, and just, you know, to continue it. Like I said before, before we know it, we're going to be on, like, the... 100th is Morgan State University. They should like try to recreate like one of the dresses or something she yeah. made. I feel like that'd be really dope. She uh -huh. like recreated uh, a picture that, that she did. Um, oh, also, fun fact uh, the Misters did not start to like 20 years after, right? Yeah, the Misters started in the 80s. Yeah, so mm -hmm. geez, that's four years after. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> we're at like the, the, the 40th, something like we're, that. Eddie is 35th. Jesus, mm -hmm. that is not nearly as long yeah. <laughs> that's not nearly as long but it still helps it's, it's kind of weird because it's like for all those years she was just the miss by herself like mm -hmm. no companion yeah or anything so that's hey you know a <laughs> woman you know because yeah. usually it'd probably be the other way around yeah. so i can't even be mad at it for uh, as a Girl, as a man I'm... myself so you know i'm just leaving it i'm gonna leave it at that i don't, don't want to get in trouble um but uh, just a few more questions regarding mm -hmm. this, and we can get into something else. Um, you've been doing phenomenal, by the way. Thank you. I love the answers, and I love how <laughs> just you. giving an insight to people who who don't know about this mm -hmm. type of stuff. Because again, this is this is this is culture, mm -hmm. like, and that's what we say. With black people, there's one thing we believe we black people got. We got culture up, <laughs> up mm -hmm. and down everywhere. <laughs> um, that's just what that's what we do. That's really what we do. Uh, so what I don't know what that was. Uh, what are some things you'd like to uh, do on campus as Miss Morgan, Miss Morgan, mm -hmm. and like things you're you're already doing? Um, and because mm -hmm. you're you're important again, you're, yeah. she's an important person. So like so some things that I actually want to do on campus, I really want to be able to talk to students, sneak peek. I have an event coming up, but at the end of the month, <laughs> I want um like this will be out tomorrow. So. Okay. <laughs> I want really to hear students. Um, I want to hear their voices about what ways they feel like Morgan can improve, like socially, Housing. academically. <laughs> like, I want to hear all of that because I really just want to be able to do anything in my power that I can to, you know, help. Um, some things I, we have, uh, well, this year, I plan on starting a tutoring program with some Morgan students for elementary school, <laughs> for elementary school, because I really just, like I said before, want to be dope. able to help Baltimore City schools. I want to be able to pour into children who are coming after us, because once we leave, it's ultimately 
it's gonna be them. It you is. know, it is gonna be them eventually. Yeah, like they need tutoring too. People in our you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, that's that's in college right now. A lot mm-hmm. of y'all be slacking, but that's neither here or there. You continue. Though. <laughs> uh-huh. And so, like my platform, ob- well, I don't know. I keep wanting to say obviously, but like people don't know that. <laughs> you don't go to Morgan. <laughs> so, like my platform was called "Don't Be Clueless, Find Your Trueness." So, what it basically does is it encourages. Um, college students to find well to figure out their passion so that in college they know what they want to do so that after they leave college they know what career they want to go down they know what path they want to go down just so they feel like going to college wasn't a waste of time it wasn't a waste of their life so that once they leave they can live their life with more intention and not just you know just vibing i mean i understand sometimes it's, it's okay to vibe but you know when you seniors. leave college <laughs> you, you want to know what you want to do right so that's basically like the premise of my platform so things that i plan is to really help um students with career development um helping with resumes um taking tours of different companies so students mm-hmm. can get you know just a foot in the door for things that they want to do a lot of career readiness yeah a lot stuff. of career readiness stuff and it's also because um i'm a senior so i know that that's something well, we're both seniors Ooh. they're like we're seniors so that's something that of course is most definitely going to help the seniors and I feel like um, even freshmen, sophomore, and juniors, the earlier you know what you want to do, I feel like the better, you know, the yeah. better you can make your college experience and things like that. So I'm really excited for everything that's coming up this year. And uh, a little comment about, like uh, you said, like the earlier um, the earlier you know what you want to do, uh, the better. Um, I, I think that's also true to an extent because mm-hmm. – you can also tell if you don't want it, mm-hmm. you know, because g- getting into the thick of it a little earlier will teach you right away being mm-hmm. like, OK, do I really want to do this? Or now that I dip my head, dip my hand in that a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, now I'm like, oh, maybe this is not for yeah. me. So then I can change because I'd rather for you to kind of hit the ground running a little bit more um, right away rather than do it. And then mm-hmm. now you're stuck. Yeah. And then I like, okay, maybe I should have changed. Yeah. No, you you know when you need to change. Yeah. Nine do. times out of ten, you're you're going to know that. Mm-hmm. So you know, just trust yourself. Yeah. Trust your instincts and things of that mm-hmm. nature. But uh. And I was talking yeah. to this boy actually the other day. He was saying that he was going to change his major. I said. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? You're nothing wrong your with truth. it. <laughs> I had to throw my campaign yeah. in there. <laughs> okay, Miss Politician. Uh, nah, you definitely give politician vibes. But the good the Thank good you. one. The good one. Okay, the yeah. One. Hopefully, one. hopefully I'm, the good one, yeah. I'm going to just say independent. I don't really trust either version at this point. They they both <laughs> got some problems they need to fix, even though I do lean more towards Democrat. <laughs> but they got some problems. Um... So, again, I talked about way early with Serena, impact. Mm -hmm. That is something that's very important, especially when you hold these positions, Mm -hmm. because you are the 78th Miss Morgan State University. It's going to be a 79th, an 80th, and each one had something that they did, Mm -hmm. something that they they left an impact on. And I can already tell a little bit about what you want your impact be to kind of (laughs) just be in the people like mm-hmm. really hear hear their people hear their voices and things yeah. of that nature but of course of course you can say it better than me mm-hmm. so like what do you want to be known for when your time is finished here and oh, what wanna... do you want your impact to be a little more i was about to say i don't want to think about my time being up that's gonna well, be a hey, sad hey, you're day. only three weeks in that right? gonna, that's <laughs> gonna be a sad day. but no um like i just really want my impact to like i said before i just really want to be able to inspire people because i go back to even this past summer when i had completed my internship at in, at fox news in connecticut like that wasn't easy trying to get that because i was applying for a lot of internships was not getting them they be playing, yeah what <laughs> wasn't though. wasn't getting them but i never gave up on myself because i knew what i wanted to do i was passionate about it i found my trueness so i knew Yay. that this is something that i wanted to do so i just really want to instill in people that like you just have to really keep trying you have to trust god you have to trust the process because you know good things don't come to you easily like they require never. work and that's just something that i really want people to realize as well And I also want people to know, like, it's never too late to change what you want to do. Because like you said before, we're always evolving. Like, just because you accomplish so much doesn't mean that you have to stop right there. Like, you can keep going until you have, like, 100 plaques 
on yourself <laughs> or a hundred trophies on yourself. Like I want people to really just keep going, keep stay motivated, you know? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, you, you're just doing great. You're doing Thank great. You. Really, Thank you. Thank really you. Thank you. Uh, you really are doing great, Kasha. <laughs> um, so now I kind of just segue to like kind of a little bit of the last parts. We're almost about an hour in. It's mm-hmm. a really good conversation. Um, I think people really gonna like you. you I know? hope they do. I, I know, hope right? y'all like me. Run, run the views <laughs> up. Don't run the views up for me. Run it, run it up for her. You know, I'm just, I'm just a regular guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> With a little bit of a platform. But uh, in addition to being uh, Miss Morgan, it's. Again, it's also senior year, and it's senior year for me as well. And I love talking to, to my fellow seniors. It's it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, we got this. Um, just how, how does it feel to be close to the end? Because one of the things I always like to put in there before we say that is we've been through hell and yeah. back because of just the world you have the yeah. pandemic i mean monkeypox is happening too right now you have like just all these different things that have prevented us from having the full college experience that we wish we were able to have but at the end of the day we're here now and we're making the most of what we have so how does it feel to be at the end considering all that bullshit you know, mm-hmm. i'm gonna just keep it explicit <laughs> i don't care all that bullshit we had to go through yeah I would say being at the end, it's most definitely an accomplishment because even when we had school, when we were in school online during the year we got sent home, that was a very difficult year because I'm the type of person, I'm not really used to doing online school. Like Neither prior, am I. <laughs> prior to that, I had never taken any online classes. So it was all just like it was new to everyone else. It was also new to me. And I feel like that could have been the perfect opportunity for me to just say, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done. Like, I'm I could have just stopped. But honestly, like, I had to really motivate myself, keep staying motivated. I had to think about the end goal. I had to think about my life after school, think about what I wanted to do. So I'm like, no, I just have to really stay here and just keep pushing through. But honestly, to be back on campus, it just feels great. Like I said, like, it's a great accomplishment to really be at the end. And I really can't even believe we're at the end because it feels like yesterday was just freshman year. Freshman year. Every and time I say that. It was Costa time. and it was freshman week and it was all these freshman events that we were going to. But it's been an experience. I would say going to an HBCU, going to Morgan specifically, it really has changed my life for the better. Amen. It helped me grow. Um, it helped me really step into who I am, like as a woman, step into my confidence. So it's an experience I would never give up for the world. Like, yeah. you know. I, I love my H. I love my B. HBCU. <laughs> <laughs> like I really do. I I love it too, and. Uh, especially being 900 miles away from home and it was difficult still mm-hmm. is difficult at times I, I would love to be back home a little bit more but i have things i have to do here um and i came here to grow and that, mm-hmm. that at the end of the day that that's that's what i'm here for even being 45 minutes away is <laughs> difficult for me <laughs> <laughs> um but uh what are some of like your goals and aspirations as we try to close out the year because of course you have the miss morgan thing and stuff like that mm-hmm. but it's it's a little bit more than that you know yeah so what what are some of those so i would say my goals and aspirations um Something that I really want to do, I really want to be able to, of course, land a job before I graduate. Amen to that. Amen to that. Before I graduate, (laughs) I would love, like, and when I say love, I mean love in capital letters with a whole bunch of E's at the end. Who you telling? So I would love to land a job um, in the field, in the career that I want. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, another goal would be to get into more sponsorships and then also, another goal, like I was saying before, is to possibly maybe get some acting in. See, I'm with you on that. I hope I'm so. trying to get into that, I too. really hope so, either acting or modeling, because it's just something that I, I really want to do. I feel like they go hand do. in hand nowadays, yeah. because it's like you're already a figurehead, and you're going to be seen on camera, and then you have the galas and things of that nature for, like, premieres and stuff like that. Yeah. So I feel like it all just connects at that point. Yeah, it does. So those are just, like, some, like, those are just some of the goals that I have, um, before the end of the year but you know like i said before constantly evolving so all the time all the time and looking beautiful while Thank doing you. it you gotta keep you know you gotta you gotta be like yeah I, 
her a thief. <laughs> what? But um, I I have the same type of goals mm-hmm. uh, in general. I, I want a I want a J O B yeah. job as SpongeBob would say. <laughs> and that, yeah. You remember that episode? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he was spazzing on Squidward for no reason. Actually, for a good reason. I'm not gonna lie, cause I would, I'd be pissed too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I want a job. Um, I want to continue building my platform. I want to keep doing the things that I'm doing. And cause what I realize, people like me. They know I'm doing stuff and all that. But I have to. I'm at the point now where it's like I have to keep like creating stories. I have to yeah. keep doing my reporting to have a rapport of being like, yo, I do this. So. When it's time um, for me to show people what I can do, it's not just my word to mouth. I have video evidence, audio evidence, audio evidence for me because I want to do radio, mm-hmm. uh, radio and podcast, and I have evidence as to what I am doing. Yeah. And of course, I do music and stuff too. And you know, I talked about that. I do podcast. I do a lot, but mm-hmm. the, my main thing right now, I'm putting music a bit on the back. Actually, not a bit. I'm putting music on the back burner right now mm-hmm. because I want to get my job and I want to continuously. I want to focus on what on what I know needs to be focused on right now, which yeah. is my multimedia journalism career uh, in radio mm. uh, specifically. But I can still write. Don't don't get it yeah. twisted. Don't <laughs> don't get it twisted. But um, is it hard balancing everything? Um, in regards to class, being a student leader and just living your life, because I definitely had that struggle mm-hmm. last year, um, and even this year, uh, just getting started with this stuff and yeah. social life too. You talked about that mm-hmm. also. But just <laughs> like how is that uh balance like? I would say sometimes it's most definitely a struggle because I have to make time for what's important. So obviously, um this school year class is important, my grades are important. Amen. And Miss Morgan State falls right behind that. <laughs> so sometimes like I have to tell my friends like, well I can't go here and I can't go there. And it's, um, you know, I find myself, I find myself saying like, wow, I really miss my friends. I really miss my family. But, you know, I have to just keep reminding myself that it's all for a great cause. And it's not to say that I can never hang out with my friends at all, because I know that I'll have time to hang out with my friends. It will maybe be like every once in a while I have to tell my friends oh no I can't go because you know I have to do this or whatever but I would say something that really helps me to keep my life balanced and keep me to not run around like a chicken with my head cut off (laughs) is most definitely a planner because when I write things down I remember what I have to do Um, I write the time that I have to do it how much time I'm dedicating to it and then also sometimes something that I always tell people is that you can't do everything. So it's like, although I am the face of the school and people might want me here, people might want me there, I have to prioritize the things that I'm doing. So sometimes, unfortunately, I do have to tell people no because I have to remember, like, even though I'm doing this, I am a student, I have to put my mental health first, keep myself first so that I'm not, again, running around. <laughs> yeah, so it's just honestly, I feel like it's just all in learning how to prioritize, learning when to say no. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, as everyone knows, I was smooth president last year, and mm-hmm. I did a lot and things of that nature. But, mm-hmm. you know, I just had to, I had to deal a lot, and I definitely told my friends a lot. I mm-hmm. was like, yo, I have a meeting, or yo, I have this event I have to go to, or I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do this, I have to do that. And it's going to be even more of that now, even though I'm not the president. I, I, again, I'm redirecting my energy to things that I that I want to do so then I can have what I want by the time I graduate. Mm-hmm. It's it's a mixture of a lot of different things going on. And, you know, you I really admire you for the fact that you're doing Miss Morgan your oh, senior year you. and stuff, because that is not an easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. And still graduating spring 2023, yeah. which is in about nine months. So it's like, holy shit. Like, you know, like, what? Like, we're yeah. about to be done. Mm-hmm. So that kind of leads me to the thing of how do you practice self care? Mm-hmm. Um, because that's a big thing. Um, yeah. it, it's a really big thing. I use my religion, I use uh, praying, I use. Uh, going off for walks every now and then. Very mm-hmm. peaceful. Um, music, of course, because I love music to the day I die. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and, you know, just watching different movies sometimes or just chilling with friends in a 
chill setting, sometimes letting loose. But how do you practice mm-hmm. your own self-care? I would say I most definitely practice self-care, like you said. Um, I read a devotional for women. It's called All Things Beautiful. So it focuses on, like, different scriptures and then has commentary behind it. Really good stuff in there. It really, like, calms my mind, brings me back down, um, especially after a stressful day and all of that. But other than that, I do hang – I do, like, call my friends and say, oh, hey, what are you doing? Do you want to go here? Sometimes I just have to honestly lay in my bed and watch TV. That's cool. Online shopping. It also (laughs) brings me down. Like, it also helps me to just relax. Um, I would say I'm really kind of a introvert. Which I know is yeah. kind of hard to... No, is that not. hard to believe? It's not. Okay. It's not hard to believe. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I've talked to you several times. And like sometimes I'll be like, you want to be Miss Morgan State? And like, you want to do the missus? I'll be like, but you're just so reserved and stuff. Like, you just be vibing. Yeah. But if you want to do it, then like, I ain't going to tell you not to do it. Uh-huh. So go out and yeah. do your thing. Mm-hmm. Like, even though I am like serving and I have to be in front of people and at all these events, I almost definitely say... I most definitely am an introvert, so going out a lot of the time is something that I usually don't do. Whenever I'm trying to relax or whenever I'm practicing self-care, I prefer to be inside unless I'm, like, going to the nail salon or something (laughs) like that. I prefer to be inside because I do like to spend time alone or even when I'm with my friends, I do like to just be inside. Like, sometimes me and my friends, we might go out to eat and things like that, but... I'm most definitely an indoors person. So self-care, anything that I do self-care, it's always going to be inside of the house because I'm like, you know, I was out all week. No, I got to stay in the house this weekend. No, that's, I totally agree (laughs) with Mm -hmm. that. Um, I, I'm an extrovert, but I'm an introverted extrovert. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's what, uh, my, my first inclination is to talk to people a lot and, I mean, everybody, again, everybody knows who knows me. I talk, I talk, I talk, yeah. I talk, I talk. I know I do, right? Mm-hmm. Listen, like, you don't have to tell me. Like, I know that. But at the same time, like, again, I would tell people, like, I don't like, I don't like going to parties like that. Uh, I don't like going out and drinking and stuff like that all yeah. the time or doing extracurricular activities <laughs> and things of that nature. You're not going to get into that. Um, but, like, that's just not me. But I do love chilling, listening to music. I do me like too. going on walks and things of that nature. I, I do like just vibing with somebody and Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna lie i'm not a big phone person like on the phone type Mm -hmm. person like unless you're like my girlfriend for real Mm -hmm. or somebody i'm talking to i rarely like be on the phone with people (laughs) like generally it's yeah the only time i can vividly remember like staying on the phone with somebody is when i've actually like been legit like talking talking to them okay and that was only what with two three four women total in my life Mm -hmm. for real other than that like especially if you might one of my guys i'd be like I don't want to be on the phone with yeah. you. Respectfully. I love love mm-hmm. my, I love my guys, but I'm like, that's just not me. Yeah. That's just not me. I'm a little bit of the opposite. I like to be on the phone with my friends. You know? Like, I can sit on the phone with my friends, honestly, for hours as long as I'm in the house. That's true. <laughs> it, it depends sometimes. Cause yeah. I, it'd be like, I want to listen to something on my phone. Yeah. And so I can't listen to it the same while way you're on the phone while talking. I'm on the phone. Yeah. And that's that's one of my that's one of the problems. Mm-hmm. Sometimes though, like again, like I make an exception if like my girl is something of that nature. Sometimes with certain different friends, but like um I don't know, I have uh, trouble with the uh, silence sometimes when mm-hmm. it comes to people. I feel like I need to say something because that's a whole other thing with mental health and things of that nature. Things I'm getting over and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. like there are certain there are definitely some friends where I just be on the phone with for a while, but it's because I'm just so busy mm-hmm. and because when I am finally home, I've been talking to people all day. I don't want to be on the phone right yeah, now. I know. So, <laughs> so that yeah. that's really what it is because I am talking to people <laughs> so day, much. Day, it's like yo, you, now you're calling me and I'm like yo, I like respectfully, I love you. I love you. I swear I do. I, I do. I do. But I am tired. <laughs> like, like, I'm, I, like, I'm tired, bro. Like, I, like, I'm just saying. Like, for some people, though, again, I do got to call them and talk to them and stuff like that. It's a necessity. Mm-hmm. But. I'm tired. Yeah, like, I'm tired. Like, I get, I get really tired. My social yeah. battery runs out, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm done. Mine does. Respectfully. Yeah. Respectfully. <laughs> like, I just, I just get tired. Mm-hmm. But I don't mind being on the phone every night. No, yeah. It's it's cool. It's it's just a balance sometimes, you know. Yeah. But 
again, I love my friends regardless. Um, mm-hmm. But the reason why I brought up the self care thing, we get into the last few things I'm gonna talk about. Uh, again, you're doing phenomenal. Thank you're doing you. phenomenal, Kasha. <laughs> is I saw this thing about it's not it's uh, September Suicide Prevention Month, mm-hmm. and I saw this post. Um, and here's just some of the things uh, about it regarding suicide. It says so like underneath suicide, it says con- it's considered a tragedy. Then suicidal, they're considered attention seeking. I mean, yeah, you can look at it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then another for suicide, everyone is pr- uh, present to grieve and cry and stuff. Suicidal, most people try to avoid them. Mm-hmm. Like you know, this just some of the ones for that. Uh, I think one of my favorite ones is uh, suicide. Everyone wishes they hadn't done it. Suicidal, no one believed they'd actually ever do it. Mm-hmm. And that really resonates with me. Mm-hmm. Like that is really true. Because sometimes when people yeah. say they're suicidal and stuff like that, I'd be like. Okay, I'm going I'm to look at it a little bit, but I'm not going to dive too much into it for real. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, maybe it'll be okay. I'll check up on them every now and then. Like, I've had two people that I know back home who have committed suicide mm-hmm. now. I'm sorry, that's not the right word now. They have, I think it's killed themselves. or I, I don't know the exact terminology, but I have to I have to figure that out. And I'm sorry if I, I did say that incorrectly. Um but just uh, that kind of leads me to what they said. Like s- s- September is Suicide Prevention Month. This is a Let's Talk dot Mental Health um, uh, Instagram page. So basically, over eight hundred thousand people pass away from suicide each year. Mm. Suicide is the tenth biggest cause of death in the world, and I think heart disease is number one. Um, males represent seventy seven percent of all suicides, which crazy. And I think black males is probably going to be even higher. Mm-hmm. Um, females are more likely to have suicidal thoughts, which is kind of interesting because it's like they're more likely to have suicidal thoughts. But males present 77 percent of all suicides. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, there were over one million suicide attempts, just attempts in 2020. That is insane, but in 2020, it makes sense because yeah. of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I get it, but at the same time, it really sucks. Mm-hmm. It sucks the fact that I get it because I know, but at the same time, it still sucks. Like I can understand something, but still be able to say, that sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then speaking up when suicidal is not a teacher. Oh, speaking up when suicidal is not attention-seeking. And that really... That really like changed my perspective. Mm-hmm. We talked. About, I actually talked about um, they changed the suicide uh, prevention yeah. number to nine eight eight, but it's still the other number is one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. But um, it was like after just hearing all that those facts that I read, set out and everything, and talking about self care and stuff. How mm-hmm. how does that like? What does that mean to you? And what would what does all that information like say to you? Like, what's your take on that? Mm-hmm. So I almost definitely say. Um, it's a shocker, um, especially the fact that you read about the men. Again, like you said, um, in 2020, how we had all those suicide attempts, but you're also not really surprised because that's when the pandemic started. People were losing their jobs. People were locked up in their house. People were dying because of COVID and other things. So people didn't know how to handle all of those things. Um, there was nothing on TV, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to distract you but yeah, COVID, nothing. death, and the yeah. Black Lives Matter movement, which was a whole it, other thing, bro. Yeah, it was rough. It was every single time you turn on the TV, news, news, news. Every single time you watch the news, it was... Bad news. Yeah, it was always bad news. Um, and it's like, I just feel like we have to really like take that serious because I think mental health I feel like people have taken it more serious over the course of the year Mm -hmm. but I think people are still kind of not taking it as serious as it should be taken um like we said no matter what's going on you have to learn to fit your self-care in your daily routine like it has to be something that you do on the daily or things like that are going to happen. You can't burn yourself out. You can't overwork yourself. And people always um, try to make it seem like, well, if you're having mental health issues, then that means something is wrong with you, like you're crazy. But that's not what it means at all. Like, if you need help, it's nothing wrong with asking for help. We even... um, say that in church all the time Mm -hmm. it's okay not to be okay and if you need to talk to someone um then you need then do that by all means do that and i would most definitely say and encourage everyone you know take it seriously because 
People could be walking around smiling and you just never know. That's why when people say check on your friends, check on your family, literally check on them and make sure they're okay. See if they'll talk to you and tell you something that they're holding deep inside because you just never know. And you have to take it seriously, you know? Yeah. No, that's... It, it, you're taking the words right out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that, that's literally what it is. That's what it always has been and what it continue needs to be. Again, I take therapy. Um, mm-hmm. well, take therapy. I go to therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like everyone should. Even if you yeah. feel like there's nothing specifically wrong with me, like wrong with you. Like there's nothing like wrong with me in terms of like I'm not about to I'm not suicidal or things of that nature. Mm-hmm. But there are things that can be better in me, mm-hmm. and I recognize them. And even if you do not recognize them. You should just go just to see, at the yeah. very least, because it, it could be helpful. Have you ever been to therapy? I don't think I've ever had been. It's a counseling center, but then, you know, there it's so so every now and then when it comes to mm-hmm. scheduling. Because so, there's a lot of people on campus, yeah. so I understand, mm-hmm. especially with all these freaking freshmen out here now. <laughs> Jesus. Um, you know, no <laughs> disrespect to you freshmen, issue. but I'm just saying, when you're a senior and mm-hmm. when you, you're the freshman out of that freshman now, when you are a senior, you will understand what I'm saying when you see... Bro, what's up with all these freshmen? Like, they just wildin', bro. Like, it's, just, it's crazy, dog. Uh, and y'all should feel disrespected, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> honestly. But, um, you... <laughs> um, but definitely, I would say, you know, it's, you have the opportunity. Look into therapy mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Everybody's got to find what works for them. Yeah. Um, because, uh, uh, church, it, to an extent, helps you with therapy. It helps you in a therapeutic way, but, uh, sometimes you need a little bit more help than that. That's just what it is, and there's nothing in the Bible that's against therapy, at least as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. If you see it, comment underneath on the YouTube or whatever, let me know. I, Other than that, I don't see a reason why not. You shouldn't get extra help. If God had put it in your life, then why not use it? Yeah, God created therapists. He created people exactly. to, who are experts in this for this reason, so that we have them on earth and we can utilize them. Yeah, exactly. What she said, right? She's so smart, right? <laughs> I know. Um... But just kind of the last thing, talking about Christianity, things of that nature, a little bit kind of fun, a little bit uh, topping it away. Like uh, you mentioned it earlier, but you're a preacher's kid. Um, I'm a preacher's kid as well, a pastor's <laughs> kid, whatever you want to say. You know, your pastor, your, your dad, he was the leader. He's the leader, leader of the church. Yeah. But <laughs> I'll say it yeah. like that. <laughs> My dad was like yeah. second. Um, and... It's an interesting experience being a PK. It is. It's very interesting. Um, especially because we were talking before we started recording and everything of like everybody like expects you to just be like this like holy or just this persons on, on the straight and but narrow. I'm just a normal girl. I promise it, you. I'm just a normal guy. I promise <laughs> you. Like I make mistakes. Like it's that's just what it is. Yeah. And like you were like they're telling me if you all this and I'm like yo. I'm ten, yeah. like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm nine. Mm-hmm. I'm ten. Like, what? Like, why are y'all yeah. like talking to me like this? Like, let me let me make mistakes. And I wish people would tell me that a little earlier, and I would have made more mistakes yeah. for real. Because then, I think, like er- like everyone else, you have to. The only the main way you learn is through trial and error and through mistakes and seeing other people's mistakes, but not just seeing it, but actually understanding the process behind mistakes. As I've grown up recently. I see why people act the way that they do because like I'm in the situation or like I have the thought and stuff and I'm like, this is why they do this. Mm-hmm. Like I get it. Like I mm-hmm. get it now. And, and that's when I'm like, okay, now I see that's not for me. You know, just, yeah. just stuff like, have you ever like had that experience as well? Yeah, I most definitely have. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, isn't it, it is. You're <laughs> like, dang, you know, maybe I'm not trouble children, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> cause you, at one point, I was like looking down on people for doing certain things, mm-hmm. and I'm like, they're just people. Like they're just, yeah. they're just, they, they like, fuck you up. Know? You know? Yeah. No one's perfect, honestly. I know. And I feel like, like you were saying before, being a a preacher's child, that's something that I want to say. Not that I struggled with because I knew <laughs> I wasn't perfect, but I think other people struggled with the fact that I wasn't perfect because. My parents, even though, you know, my mom was a first lady and my dad is a preacher, they didn't really keep me sheltered. They allowed me to experience certain things. They allowed me to do certain things. And I think for some people, that was a shocker to them because they felt like, oh, because he's a pastor and I'm the child that 
they should just keep me sheltered. But it's just not the way that the world works, you know? Yeah. Like, your stuff happens in the world. I have to be aware. If I was not aware, then I would not know how to do certain things. I wouldn't know how to handle myself in certain situations. So that's something that I, I'm most definitely grateful for. I would say being a preacher's child now, it's cool now that I'm older. <laughs> yeah. But when I was younger, it was really an experience because you just have other people thinking that they can tell you what to do. Um, you have, like you were saying before, you know, people saying to me, well, you're the preacher's daughter. You should know better. I'm 10 years old. So yeah. <laughs> it's like, and it wasn't said to the other children. It was specifically said to me, like, only I should know better. Like you was like an upper yeah, echelon but of why, children. Yeah, why am I the only one that should know better if all of us are 10 and under, you know? <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm a child. So it's like, no, I really shouldn't know any better, you know? Like, I'm still growing up, but... I would say it's an experience. It it really has shaped me. Um, I think my parents, you know, they did a great job handling certain situations when it comes to dealing with, you know, church members and things like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. People can be a little. Yeah. They they feel like they know what you should be doing. Yeah. And they feel like like they have an idea of what you should be. Yeah. And it's like. Who, mm -hmm. who 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 told you to do that? Yeah, you know, like and at the same time, like even like in your in your dad's um or well actually both of our 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 parents um position like they're not perfect either. Yeah, they're not. And mm -hmm. I love how like at first I kind of looked at it as that type of way with uh my pastor. My main pastor was actually a woman, and I actually want to talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit. But, like, even, like, realize it after a while, too. Like, with her, she wasn't perfect. And my dad wasn't perfect. The mm -hmm. other pastors were not perfect. The other people in church were not perfect. They make mistakes. Yeah. Sometimes they get in random drama for no yeah. reason because it happens. And I, I think we all just have to be like, yo, we sin. It literally says in the Bible, you know, we sin. And even if you don't believe in the Bible and things of that nature, we all make mistakes. Yeah. And mistakes are not a bad thing. They're mistakes. That's how you learn. Mistakes. Mm -hmm. Missed takes. You know, like, <laughs> it's just like, it, like, it happens. Yeah. And because you get some takes right. You get some takes wrong. It's like sports debates. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you're going to get something right, right? Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> like, you know, like, eventually. Mm -hmm. So that's just, um... That's okay. And then yeah. uh, kind of just two more things of... Uh, actually, I'm going to just do one. Um, come to the faith on your own. Uh, being a Christian, like I talked about... Uh, I preached my first sermon when I was like 9, mm -hmm. 10 years old in fifth grade. And, you know, from that, people kind of was like, oh, he's like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. He does it. He's so mm -hmm. annoyed that, yada, yada, yada. But I'm like, I am, I am, definitely am. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I still have a lot of growth to do. And I have my doubts about God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I still have my doubts about God overall. But... That's my faith, though. And that's just, you know, it took me a while to get to that point, especially because everybody's, like, oh, he's a preacher kid. Or, like, he's, like, he's so upright or he talks proper and things of that nature. So people just assume that I didn't make mistakes or, like, I didn't have my my quarrels or whatever. I ain't going to say quarrels. But, you know, just my questions mm -hmm. and things about God. And I wish I asked them more so I mm -hmm. could just, uh, like, ask people around me more about it so then I can really go after why, you know, I had these questions and try mm -hmm. to figure out why I am the way that I am. But did you kind of have like that same type of process at all? So I would say, well, my dad had been a pastor since I was about one years old. I was like really <laughs> young. By the time I was eight years old, I was baptized. So I gave my life okay. to Christ. But then when I got older, um, you know, I was young. I was eight years old. So I had like an immature understanding. But yeah. since I got older, I recommitted because, you know, I was older. So I, I understood it. Again. Yeah, I, I understood it a lot more because I was more mature. I would say my parents have always encouraged me to stay, like, very strong in my faith. Mm -hmm. Of course, like you said, we always have Same. doubts. Sometimes I it feels like, oh, God is not showing up. But regardless of what I think or regardless of how I feel, I know that God is always with me. I know that he's always around. It might not seem like it because of certain things that happen, and, my, and I may even think it. But like I said, regardless of it, I know that he's always around. And I know that um, even when it does feel like that, it's 
you know, he's he's allowing me to feel like that for a reason mm -hmm. because maybe he is trying to, you know, get me to trust him a lot more. Um, he's trying to build my faith, trying to build my strength in him. And so that's something that I really do appreciate. But I do understand what you're saying. And, you know, because this is just how it feels. You know, life is tough. <laughs> life, is very Li tough. <laughs> life is tough. So it can feel like it can really feel like. I'm just all by myself and I'm never going to figure it out. But that's where I just really have to pray. That's where my faith comes in. And I'm, you know, I'm like, God is putting me through this for a reason. Yeah. So I, you know, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Whole, I agree wholeheartedly. See, that kind of rhymes right there. <laughs> yeah. Forget it. All right. No, but just, I'm just being ridiculous. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, um, that's really all I have for this podcast. We're at like one twenty-five, one hour twenty-five minutes. Wow. Um, I know, right? It went by a little quick. Yeah, right? you're doing phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. You're doing phenomenal. Um, but that's all I have for this specific podcast. Um, I really appreciate everybody for sticking out this long. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that's usually around the time that we had that we. Uh, that not we I it's just <laughs> me I, I it's funny because like on the Instagram and stuff I'll be like Jewels is back type shit like yeah. you know like there's other people no it's just me <laughs> this is literally just me but for the brand you know it's just it's, we do mm -hmm. we do third person it's cool yeah um but yeah um also another thing was about a woman pastor and a men's pastor thing but eh I didn't feel like talking about it right now but um. <laughs> So we're already at almost hour 30 but i appreciate everybody for coming this long uh kasha is there anything that you want to uh say or something of that nature before we head out anything you want to plug or um, things of that nature i really just of course want to thank you for having me here no i really enjoyed this conversation i really hope that you know i dropped some gems to you all like julian already said thank you for sticking this long because i had no idea it was a time and right there <laughs> so i had no idea we were talking for that long but like i said before like my main goal is to really be able to inspire and to keep people motivated so just hearing my story and hearing all that i've gone through and hearing the things that i'm still doing i just really hope that i inspire at least a couple people out there to you know do what they want to do and like i said before it's never too late to figure out what you want to do it's never too late to change what you want to do so don't feel like you're a failure don't feel like you're too old it's not gonna work just remember you can do this like literally i, I feel like i say that a lot but you can do it <laughs> but you can do it though like Sound literally like an anime character that just always be telling by you got this i believe in you like Naruto yeah no stuff. that's me <laughs> you you all got this just know it's never too late trust me it's never too late keep evolving yeah keep, keep evolving, evolving keep, keep growing evolving. keep doing what you have to do keep setting those goals and keep achieving them mm-hmm uh, i'm gonna plug your instagram and stuff like that yeah um my instagram is l-o-v-e dot k-y-s-h-a my twitter is my first and last name so k-y-s-h-a-h-a-n-c-o-c-k -A -C -C mm -hmm. any other socials no all right. Yeah. <laughs> and Kasha Hancock. Yes. That's how you say it. These people be uh, trying to say your name a different way. And Kasha. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they be like, I be like, yo, it's it's Kasha. My roommate was like, dude, was like, no, somebody told me it was Kasha. I was like, I have class with it. I think pronounced yeah. Kasha. Kasha. Like I yes. said, and I, I'm like, yo, I had class with her. Like I know, like I'm not <laughs> tripping, bro. Like I talked to her. Like I know, like I'm pretty sure she would correct me by yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we can't create everybody, but I'm saying yeah, if I talk to you like every day, then... sometimes can't even lie. It's just not even worth it. it, it it's it's like, not like, it's not. for example, when I go to like Chick-fil-A or something like that, or just Ooh. to a restaurant where they have to call your name Starbucks out, so I give them my mom's name. I just tell them my <laughs> name is Tracy because I know for a fact they're going to pronounce my name wrong. But then I'm like, it's not even worth correcting because they don't even know me and they're probably mm -hmm. not ever going to, well, they might see me again. No, see, proclaim that they're going to yeah. see me again on TV. Yeah, so on TV, TV so. they'll see me. But in close proximity to actually talk to me and say my name. Yeah. Maybe if I go back to the store. See, I, see <laughs> nigga like me, I don't even say my uh, my regular name, uh, Julian. Mm -hmm. I'll be like Jew. Yeah, no way you, you can told me 
that mm-hmm. I'm the only person. Well, not the only person, but one of the only people that actually calls me Julian. Yeah. <laughs> like back home, everybody called me like Julian and stuff. But I was around like probably junior senior year. Everybody started calling me like Juju and stuff. Mm-hmm. Actually, when I got to high school at, at Brander High School, they started calling me Ju a little and Juju. But but Julian, not 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 usually a lot of people call me that like yeah. my my actual full name anymore. Um, which I don't mind. I mean, I don't really care as long as you just call my name. Oh, that's that was fun. I was hooping the other day and they was like hyping me up because I got like two like clutch mm-hmm. layups and stuff. <laughs> so then like some of the guys like in the back they was like, "Joe, give the ball to Joe, yada yada yada." Uh-huh. So, <laughs> so like the last few days since then, people were like, "Yo, what what's good, Joe?" Mm-hmm. Like because some they kept hearing my yeah. name being called. I don't know your name though uh-huh. <laughs> because you know everybody kept shouting my name. It's like, yo, what's mm-hmm. good, Jew? What's good, Jew? Because again, it's easy yeah. not to mess up, yeah. bro. Because you can just be like, Jew, yeah. and stuff like that. But I'm like, <laughs> I don't know who y'all are. But they keep coming up to me and be like, what's good, Jew? Yo, what's good? Like they come to you know say hi to me. Like I, I'm not gonna go say hi to them because I don't. A, I don't remember the name. Mm-hmm. B, I didn't really talk to them like that, but I was basically the star of the show for that little mm-hmm. amount of moment, and they, everybody saw I was cool for real. So it like, keep that me up, and so I be like, "Oh, what's good?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, what's good?" Hey, go, 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 check out the music. Uh-huh. You know, go check out the, yeah. the podcast. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. But uh, also, I hate when that, that's why I was saying I hate when people spell my name wrong. That's why I just say Jew. Um, when I go to restaurants and stuff like yeah. Chick Fil A. People spell my I'm name stuck. wrong all the time. Yeah. K A S H A K H Y S H A. Wait, K H Y? Yes. K H Y S H A. Any other? No, I think the main ones are K A. I think the main one is K A S H A. Which I can kind of understand. I can see that. Yeah. Because because with the Y, it seems as though like it's not pronounced that way. Yeah. But I'm like, I know with black people specifically and stuff, I don't question it. I just be like, okay, it's spelled this way. But hold on, let me let me take a second. How would they actually pronounce it? Yeah. Then I say it, and they be like, you're the yeah. only motherfucker that got that right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, which hey, is you know, also why I understand why people call me Kaisha. So I yeah. can't really get mad at that because it's just like my name is. Spelled just like that. I don't know what my parents were. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, hey, we love the parents. The yeah, else, whatever. Because J- Julian is J U L I E N. Mm-hmm. But they say with the, but they always spell with the A N, and that bothers the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. It because it's like that's yeah, not my name. Yeah. Like that's not my name. Like Julian. that's it's just that. That's that's pronounced Julian. Your but, name is but Julian. But people still say Julian. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like the uh, A N spelling makes no yeah. sense. Because <laughs> people still say Julian. Uh huh. They don't say Julianne. They yeah. say Julian. So the E-N makes more sense, but the more common spelling is the A-N. Let yeah. me get out of here. All right, let me get out of here. Because that, that, it just doesn't make any sense. And then also my middle name is spelled with an I. What's it, your middle name? Emmanuel. I've seen that before. Yeah, but that's not as common as the E one. Yeah, it's not. But I've seen that before, though. So Only then, once before. So then when I spell it, I be like, Emmanuel spelled with an I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like they be like wait that's the thing was, yeah you just put I M M and then the rest of the things are saying mm-hmm. either way we're just rambling um yeah, but I'm thanks sorry. again for coming on the podcast of course Kasha, thanks for having me not Kaisha Kasha Kasha, Kasha see um you said your middle name was what again you Katora said Katora that's nice um, thank you but thank y'all for showing up again I'm just rambling uh, I really appreciate y'all um yeah peace bye. <laughs>